Hi everybody, my name is Jim with Full Moon Adventure Club and today we're going to be talking about the emergency start switch in our motorhome. This really only applies to motorhomes, so Class C's, uh, Class A's, Class B's. Uh, it's not going to really uh, relate to travel trailers, fifth wheel, stuff like that. They usually, they're not going to have that button. But motorhomes sometimes have what's known as an emergency start button. And it's usually located down by the steering wheel on the left side. And what this button does is activate a solenoid that connects the house battery that runs all your lights and all that stuff in the back of your RV, water pump, etc. It connects that to your chassis battery, which is what's used to start the engine of your motorhome. Okay, so it connects those two for the reason of jump starting your chassis battery if for some reason it died on you in the middle of the night. You hold in that button and it connects both of those batteries to hopefully allow you to jump start your front battery and get you home and on the road. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about that. The, uh, the, the house battery in the back is usually going to be a deep cycle battery, so it's good at uh, slowly releasing energy and then charging up multiple times. Usually don't have a lot of cranking amps. Um, and then you have your chassis battery, which is under the, the hood there, and that's what starts your engine. And that's generally designed for a lot of cranking amps, a lot of power right off the bat to get your engine started, and then not much else. Then it's just supposed to charge up and sit there idly. And so not, I've had a lot of instances with my emergency start button where my front chassis battery was dead for whatever reason. And then I tried to connect them and you push that button and sometimes it just doesn't have the power to start your engine right away. And so I'll, I'll end up kind of holding that button for minutes and minutes at a time and it can start to kind of get hard on your thumb there because it's a pretty hard little button in most cases. But hold that down. I have to hold it down for five or ten minutes sometimes to actually get enough power into my chassis battery to start the engine. So I'm going to talk about a few little tips and tricks and things that you might not know about that emergency start switch if you're new to it and uh, my experience with it. Now what I did with mine and you're going to have to use your own judgment on whether or not you want to do this kind of modification is to yours is I replaced that little button with a toggle switch and so when I turn it on it stays connected and you have to be careful when you do that because you don't want to leave them connected for a long period of time because they're two different types of batteries and they're going to have different resting voltages and they're both going to try and equalize and compete with each other and that's going to wear them out prematurely and uh, so you don't want to leave it on you want to make sure you always turn it off when you're done with it but that being said I love that upgrade because if I have to hold it down to get some energy to my front chassis battery for like five minutes I don't want to sit there pressing that hard button with my thumb for the entire five minutes waiting for that to happen. Um, so I really like that advantage and I'll get to another one here in a minute. Um, another thing that you should probably know that I like to do when I'm in that situation because you're stuck out there. If you don't have jumper cables and someone to give you a jump start or whatever, then you really need to get going on the power that you have. And so if my house battery is full and if you have a generator, I'll start my generator. So it's running and now it's feeding power into that battery. And now that I know the generator is running, I know that I'll always have some power coming into the batteries. In case I drain them both too low, now I'm just completely stuck. There's nothing I can do if I drain them both trying to jump the front one and then I drain the back one, you're stuck. And you're calling AAA if you have service. So I like to start the generator right off the bat so I have an energy source feeding power into my batteries. And uh, if you have solar, that'll be doing the same thing. But that way, now I can kind of focus on getting that front chassis battery going. Now that I have the generator running and the back battery, I flip the toggle switch, let the energy flow in there. You can give it a try. If it doesn't work, you wait about five minutes, and that's probably going to jump start it up. And that's what they do. That's what the emergency stop start button does in an RV. Now, I'm going to tell you one other pretty big advantage I think that can get you out of a jam. It's probably not something that I would recommend doing. You're gonna to have to do this at your own risk because um, there could be complications. There could be some damage to the batteries or some different things that might occur. I don't know. I'll tell you what, I'm just gonna tell you a story and you can, you can uh, take it upon yourselves whether or not you wanna duplicate that on your own. But one time we were coming back on a trip and the alternator in my engine went out. And the alternator feeds power to your batteries and your engine keeps everything running, the spark plugs, all that good stuff. And once your alternator goes out, the only thing that's keeping your engine running is the power from that battery to keep your spark plugs firing and keep that engine running. And so it lasted about an hour probably and then the battery got so low that the engine died because there was no power for spark uh, for the engine. 
So we were dead on the side of the road. It was like two or three in the morning. We were just about 30 miles from home and uh, we didn't have cell service out there. We would have been sleeping on the side of the road more than likely, so it would have been bad. But what I was able to do is flick that toggle switch to my emergency start button and that provided power from the house battery to the front battery. And that was able to start the engine and keep the engine running to get us the rest of the way home. I thought it was pretty clever, but there might be people out there that say you shouldn't do that for this or that reason. I don't know, but if you're ever in a jam, maybe it's an emergency situation, got me home. And again, I wouldn't have wanted to have to have been holding that emergency start button down while I drove down the road for 30 minutes. And uh, so I just thought that was pretty cool. You can start your generator and then connect your toggle switch. And now you've got your generator feeding power to that battery, to your front battery, to your engine, and it got me home. And so that was kind of a, I, th I thought it was pretty clever, but there might be some dangerous aspects with that as far as burning your batteries out and stuff. But if it's an emergency, I say go for it. And so I just wanted to kind of go over some of the different things about how that works and the way I have mine set up and to give you that little tip that might get you out of a jam if you ever need it in an emergency situation. So that's about all I can think to cover about the emergency start button and uh, some of my stories and using it and what they're used for. So just wanted to go through that with you. I really hope that helps. My name is Jim with Full Moon Adventure Club. Please like, share, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Until then, happy camping and take care.